Hey everybody, Ben F for the Bono Podcast and welcome to Print to Pitch. This is our show where we have a look at all things 3D printing for Blood Bowl. Whether it's teams, star players, accessories or things that have no right to be involved in Blood Bowl, but they work anyway. Now, we've seen a ton of Lizardman team over the last few months. We've had Brute Buns, we've seen Punger I think have done some Lizards. But we've got another brand new entry to the Patreon world for 3D prints. So today we're going to have a look at the Ugni Miniatures Lizardman team. Okay, so the Ugni Miniatures Lizardman team, this is their July release. And to be honest with you, they, they keep adding stuff to it. It's really, really, really cool. So this is just on Patreon. Haven't seen them uh, put together a My Mini Factory yet. I'm sure they'll end up on my mini factory or cults at some point as well, but they've really just landed when it comes to the STL world. So the 3D, uh, the 3D, the, the, the July release as it stands, uh, we've got three Croxagores, five Sauruses, two Chameleon Skinks, and six, um, six Skinks, I think. They've got a real good mix. Actually, I think there's two, yeah, two chameleon skinks and the fan with the big glove, who I would obviously use as a ra as a normal player because it's just awesome. So, the original release didn't have the skinks, and it was very much just like a here's a part one, no problem at all, right? Then they dropped six skinks, then they dropped another three sauruses without helmets, and they've dropped a lizardman slan coach as well. So Ugni are committed to just pumping out more models for this. And uh, at the end, we'll have a sneaky peek at what they're coming up with next, because it's a team that we really need uh, some more models for. But for now, let's have a look at the STLs. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the STLs. It's a very hot day, so the PC is struggling a little bit. <laughs> So forgive the lag. Uh, what we've got here is a couple of Sauruses. We've got um, one with the old Temple Guard style helmet. Now this is one of the things I really love about this, this kit. Uh, so we've got two Sauruses here, one with a helmet, one without. So it's an interesting style. Detail is absolutely all there and you can see it. You can see all the sculpting detail, you can see all the flesh textures. Uh, you know me, I'm a bit lazy when it comes to painting, so models like this that have got a lot of texture just on the flat areas means they're going to take contrast paints, means they're going to take a, a dry brush really easily. And I love that because that is a very quick way to get a team painted and ready on the pitch. So um, style of face when it comes to the lizards, these are a little bit cartoony. They look like... And they just look like 90s, 2000s morning cartoon lizard like people. And I love it. It's fantastic. We've got the Games Workshop very kind of serious looking lizardmen. And we've got these guys here, which are actually pretty chill, pretty cartoony, and I like it. But there's plenty of detail all over the model. Even the uh even the ball has got like cracks and detail on it. You've got all the spikes. But really, it comes down to the fact the Temple Guard Triceratops-style helmets are just so cool. There's plenty of armor and stuff like that on these guys as well. And this is something that is it cannot be overstated. If a model has got sports attire on, okay, uh, the shoulder pads, the shorts, or a t-shirt, having something like this, the stripes, that we saw this, and was it probably the Necromantic team from Games Workshop that first kind of brought this on? Having the stripes just allows the players a really easy way to add a second spot colour without having to manually paint stripes. Manually paint stripes and dags and things like that it can be a bit daunting. What if they look a bit fat one end and a bit thin with the other? What if it's wibbly? What if it's wobbly? This is awesome. This is just edge highlight, different colour, and you've got a nice bit of pop when it comes to the, uh, the, the trousers of that, which is a great way to add that kind of pop of sports which is what blood bowl really 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 needs you can get murder and death and monsters any way you like <laughs> you can't get them playing football any way you like so uh we've also got a couple of the let's get rid of you let's get rid of you we've got a couple of the pre-supported models here and we'll have a look at just the way that these models are supported i had one marginal fail uh no that's not fair it wasn't a fail but when i took off the um let's get rid of you when I took off the supports, I think it was actually on this model here, the jaw. Uh, you've got to be careful when taking off the supports in some of these models. It's really difficult to support a model that has dinosaur teeth. Um, 
when we went through it with the Yeti or, or uh, the, the, a couple of weeks ago. I like to rotate my models and support them myself so that I can make sure that the mouth and the face is all organically printed without having uh, flash marks and STLs. That said, with the exception of this blooming jawbone that snapped off as I was taking the supports off, the detail came out really, really, really nicely. So actually, I have to say, the pre-supports on these models are really, really good. I had no problems except for that one jawbone there. All right, now let's have a look at the chameleon skinks. I love these. There is a chameleon skink fan, which is this dude here with the little flag and the foam finger. And you've got two standard chameleon skinks. Now, I have to say, as far as the sculpting goes, the, the, the texture, again, is really, really, really well done. If you've ever looked at a picture of a chameleon or you've ever seen a chameleon in real life, they've got like gravel skin. It's probably the only way I can describe it. And... Ugni have done a superb job here of getting that effect just right. That must have been a right nuisance to sculpt. Uh, I must have been a bit of a nuisance to sculpt, but they've done a brilliant job there. And I love the way they've got these little shirts and this little kind of just minimalistic body armor. And again, you've got the shorts with the stripes. They've done a superb job capturing quite a lot of movement with this it's a slightly different again uh, a slightly different style to the games workshop one but you can obviously see that this is a chameleon skink we've got a dude who's using the, the tongue to grab the ball and you've just got these big beautiful eyes and some great textured areas yeah really big fan of this but i mean the fan is clearly the best model in this set Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of 3D prints then. I've printed this out on my Mars 2 Pro, 100% scale, standard setting. So nothing special at all, uh, except for the models themselves. So I've printed off two of the Sauruses, one with a helmet, one with not, so that we can get a good idea of how well the supports work and how well the model comes out. And I, I'm not gonna lie, like the, the Temple Guard helmet style is just so good. That's what's missing from Blood Bowl. Uh, we haven't seen that since the old metal Lizardman team, okay? And it's such a dynamic, it's just such an important part of what Lizardman used to look like. That that bone on the head was just excellent. So anyway, we can see here the details come out absolutely beautifully. And everything I said about the fact that this model is going to take um, contrasts really nicely is bang on the money. You can see all the Lizardman scales, you can see all the detail on the shorts, all the scales on the underbelly. One thing I guess to talk about is the effect of the supports. So when we looked at, I think we looked at this model um, at the, when, when we looked at the pre-supported version, you can see the supports are going to be underneath. So as I roll the model over, you can see there are some support marks on it. But if you think about how the model is going to be seen, the way they've pre-supported it means that it's actually going to protect the back and that detail on the front of the face there and when you're printing out your model and kind of thinking about how you want it to be honestly you're going to be looking at the face of the model there and, and kind of top down when it comes to playing blood bowl so any damage underneath to the underneath the arms or anything like that it's really not a major thing in any way shape or form so i like like this um this was the one that had a bit of a print fail and you can see there yeah, it's probably just me being a bit too eager and removing the uh, the supports, but definitely one to watch out for. When you've got fragile pieces like this, you have to be doubly careful when taking the supports off. Um, I always take the supports off before I clean. It just means you can get all of the goop gone um, rather than kind of taking... It's just the best way to clean the models. But yeah, watch out for that bit there. We'll have a look at a size comparison in the second. We'll just have a quick look at the second Saurus. Uh, so this is it. You kind of got two two different vibes this is very much more a snake style uh, and i think the only thing that's differentiating these two models is the type of helmets and i like this the great thing about 3d printing is you can mirror so you can have two models like this but they'll be slightly different and it works brilliantly from a, a team design point of view but again a ton of detail on the model and the print came out really cool there's a lot of movement in them and i think that's really cool so these guys are strength four so let's grab our strength four check model the black orc here so let's bring up and do the size comparison we've also got a blood seeker so let's pretend he's glued on his base actually he's got height on the black orc which is what we want this is 100 percent scale remember so we can flex but compared to a games workshop black orc size mass bigger than a black orc mass wise it's not chunky 
compared to the Black Orc, which is where you want it to be. It's bigger than a Strength 3 human. So if we compare it... Yeah, there you go. If we compare it to a Nobility Thrower, uh, who I think with the upcoming Amazon team are going to get even more angry about being underpowered. Yeah, this dude's uh, absolute miles bigger than a Strength 3 model and sizes up quite nicely to Strength 4. And we've got Bloodseeker here. This is from Rick's um, team. And you can see, actually, the Sauruses size up really nicely to that Strength 4 positional, which is exactly where you want them to be. So naturally, I printed off some Croxagores as well. We've got two, again, one with a big old helmet. And this dude here with a very cool ball and chain. It's just a really cool model. So I'm not sure we had a look at the STL for this guy, but this has got a ton of detail. The kit has got currently three Croxagores, uh, so two Croxagores and a star player Croxagore which means there's plenty of good Croxagore models out there, but you can see there's a ton of detail. Now, again, I've used their pre-support. I've used 100% and just standard settings. I've not done a brilliant job of taking away all the uh, all the supports from the model. I actually do think that there's a little bit of auto-supporting uh, with the way this model is prepped because I've got some very thin kind of wiry supports in between levels of detail, which you don't normally get on uh, professionally supported stuff, but I really don't care. If you think about all the work you'd have putting together a Games Workshop Forge World model versus the amount of work it took to not build this at all, <laughs> yeah, I'm in. This is fine. Actual design in the model, it's got a T-Rex head. That's just T-Rex, right? So... 10 points immediately this is wicked the ball and chain design is really clever as well i i just you've got yourself a cool creek verminator alternative sculpt here and it's just a big old chappy we'll check the size in a second once we've had a look at the star player croxagore and this is awesome so with the amazon spoils at the moment i'm really hoping we're going to see some kind of lizardman star player preferably a return of a croxagore star player or something like that because this model is awesome you've got again that kind of allosaurus serious uh, serious dinosaur head underneath and you've got this gigantic triceratops helmet and i didn't break it when i did the uh, when i took the supports off this time here but they've gone all in on the detail with this one you've got like a ring around the thing you've got this kind of tabard over it as well it just absolutely smacks of temple guard now again there's lots of thin wiry supports so if you're using the pre-supported version there'll be a little bit of cleanup not a huge amount like you can definitely just chuck on an episode or something uh i just watched season four of stranger things with tiff really good chuck that on while you prep it the, <laughs> the episodes are plenty long enough so yeah loads of detail really good print came out really nice let's grab our strength five comparison and honestly blow you away look at the size of this this is big this is big, but not so big that it's not going to be suitable for Blood Bowl. Um, can we do the uh, can we do the size test like that? So we can see that the the Croxagore here has got uh, has it got height on the ogre? Yeah, it's got a bit of height on the ogre. It's definitely got mass on the ogre, but it will fit on a 32 mil base if you are that way inclined, or a 40 mil base if you are doing your big guys properly. So yeah, this sizes up really nicely to strength five. And if we're going to size it to a strength three thing, it's just absolutely, absolutely massive compared to it. And even if you compare it to the Sauruses, who we've seen are appropriately sized, it's a big old scale up. And it works beautifully. Both these Sauruses, and I really like they've got different kind of styles. So if you want a more dinosaur version, you can go this way. If you want a more Temple Guard team, you've got these guys. And it gives you a lot of flexibility. Again, this does just... It just does just smack of like 90s cartoons and I absolutely love that kind of retro look. So the Croxagores, pre-support's good, detail's good, size is very good. Absolutely love Chameleon Skinks. As a player, I think they're underrated. On the ball, passing 3+, plus, plus. Passing 3 plus with Stunty, they're just awesome players. Absolutely love them. So I've printed off two of the Comedian Skinks. I don't think I actually printed off the fan. I thought that I had, but I guess I hadn't. And I haven't had time to print out the Skinks either because uh, I just printed these as soon as we got back, basically. Absolutely love this. So uh, all the detail that we had has come out nicely. You can see, again, you've got that kind of thin, wiry pre-support uh, kind of left over there. But again, a cocktail stick... And an episode of Stranger Things, and you have your team based as well in no time at all. So, Comedian Skink 1, really good. And I love the dynamism of this as well. It's just 
it hits the mark of what you expect from the comedian's kick. The tongue shooting out, grabbing the ball. It's what they do. It represents on the ball. And that's why I wonder if we'll see a little bit of that in the Lisbon team. Now they've got some uh, some snake ladies, but absolutely brilliant. So these are going to be strength two. So let's grab Grot Brady and do a size comparison. Size-wise, the chameleon skinks, it's a difficult one. They are, they are hunched over. So in their crouch position, they line up nicely. They're a bit bigger, but they line up nicely as a strength two piece. I think the fairest comparison would be to pop them against a strength three player. And actually, you can see because of that height, they are pretty evidently a strength two piece. The really fun, really fun thing is when you put them up against the size of one of the star player Croxagores, and they are just pretty small. These will work beautifully, and I love them. And I can't believe I didn't print out the fan one. I think I may have printed out and just left them in the shed or something, but a really big fan. Now, the skinks of the team dropped uh, as well. They're about the same size as the comedian skinks. So it's looking like a clean sweep on the 100% scale being exactly what you need. And there you have it. We've got a new competitor in 3D Blood Bowl printing. New Lizardman team with a ton of variations. You've got the classic Temple Guard helmets, You've got the very kind of Velociraptor-eyed skinks that work really well. You've got a mixture of Croxagores to choose from, whether you want the kind of Allosaurus, Tyrannosaurus one, or the big old chunky helmet dude. I love this team. They've done a really good job. It is a more cartoony take on Lizardmen, but without making it so much that it's a joke team. It's not a joke team. The sculpting's really good. They've just got, I think I've said it about 20,000 times, a 90s cartoon comic book feel. And it's really cool. This is going to be a super, super popular Lizardman team. There are some great choices out there. I'm super stoked to see what they're bringing because this is pretty exciting. And the team that they're looking at next is really cool as well. It's High Elves. And this is the work in progress pictures of it. And they've got kind of like this wow vibe. This just like looks like a dark knight. They've got the classic kind of scale mail mixed with breastplate that you expect from a high elf team. Again, it's got a little bit of that cartoony dynamic as well. That slight over exaggeration. I really like it. I'm really excited by what these guys are doing. But that is going to be everything for Ugly Miniatures. They are on Patreon. They are moving to um, my mini factory as well. I don't know if they're going to start a tribe, but the models will be available there. So if you like this team, go check it out. I think the, their Patreon's sort of eight, nine pounds a month, which is exactly where everything else kind of is. And it's pretty cool and we do like to see more creators supported when it comes to blood bowl because more blood bowl is more better anyway i'm gonna wrap up for now thank you very much for watching we'll be back soon with more blood bowl content happy printing thanks very much for watching we really appreciate your support if you want to help support the channel even further please like and subscribe or come join us on our patreon we have early access to content we get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can or you can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.